Hello, my name is Daisy Noel, and I will be sharing some information with you about this digital citizenship for grade five. What we can start off by discussing is what is di digital citizenship? What does that mean? It is basically in the terms, it is the, the ability to safely and responsibly access digital technology as well as being an active and respectful member of society, both online and offline. So it not only relates to the way you behave and um, your ability to safely navigate technology, but it's also when you're offline. So it basically has to do not only with the technology aspect, but how respectful and responsible that you are as it relates to other interacting with other people and society. Some of the do's, which is a, about being a good digital citizen has to do, you hear a lot of do's and don'ts, but the do's is the main thing that I'm going to focus on right here. Um, the main focus would be you are more conscious of other people in your community. You help do things and interact with your community um, to try to improve different aspects of the community. You um, are very involved in social organizations and organizations that um, are very um, geared towards helping those maybe that are not in the best of situations. Okay, and another do has to do with being respectful. I talked about earlier about being respectful of those around you. Um, it is important even though you do not have the same opinion or view as somebody else, that you can be respectful to them and respect their opinion and their point of view and discuss it and debate it with in a very um, productive and respectful way. Okay, and also another do of being a good digital citizen is you shape public policy. What that means is the things that you do and the way that you interact with people, not only online and offline, it helps to impact your community and helps impact different decisions that are made with local, maybe even more um, on a higher level, maybe a state level of policies and decisions that are made with politicians and different um, decision makers. And then the last do on this list is recognize the validity of online sources. Okay, you, what that means, validity is the word that we'll focus on. Validity focuses on how things are accurate and true. If something is a valid source, it is a true source. It's something that you could probably put your confidence and faith in. It's probably considered a credible source and you've got to be, that we'll discuss in, in future slides about how to recognize different online sources um, as being valid or credible. Okay, and the next thing we'll move on to, which we've touched on already, is being respectful. That's a big word that you'll hear discussed in, as it relates to digital citizenship as being respectful. Okay, so how do you, we ask that question, how do we respectfully engage with other people that have different beliefs online? Well, one big thing, if you notice that the picture on the screen will be the idea of embracing our differences. That's a big, big thing. Just because somebody looks different than you, has a different ethnic back, background, different religious views, different, different political views, just because they're different in those ways doesn't mean that we can't get along and we can't engage in conversations and work together to better policies and better our communities and better different situations. So 
what um, one thing we'll discuss is it says, do not let disagreements anger you. Okay. This is a big thing when you're trying to engage with people that have different points of view than yourself is do not let the, the fact that you have disagreements with each other um, cause you to react in an angry or negative way. Um, if you feel yourself being maybe triggered or up getting upset about a certain situation that you might be engaging with somebody online, then it's best to just step away and back away from that situation. Then to continue to engage, because when emotions are involved, sometimes um, it can have a negative impact on how you're perceived or how your perspective is perceived. And then the next thing is do not become defensive because people think different than you. It also kind of relates to the first point that we discussed. Um, defensive, we know if somebody is being defensive, they're being angry or upset towards other people um, because they feel like they are maybe being targeted or somebody is treating them in a negative way just because somebody has a different point of view than your than yours don't let that trigger any defensive or angry emotions and again if you feel like this can be an issue for you the best thing to do is to step away from it okay and then the final thing is to share your opinions or views but do not expect to change their minds okay so what that relates to is it's okay to engage in the de respectful de debate it's okay to share what your opinion or your point of view is, but just because you feel strongly about this point of view does not mean that you should expect that other people are going to hear it and immediately think the way that you think or believe what you believe. You can express these opinions or views but don't necessarily expect that that's going to change somebody's mind. Okay. And so how do you know, let's ask this other question. How do you know online sources are valid? We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but it's to look at the main thing is to look at the three letters at the end of the domain name. So the domain domain name we know is the web address that's at the top of the page. Well, when you look at the bot bottom, not the bottom, but at the last three, excuse me, letters of the domain name, some of the examples of ones that if you if you see these three letters, they usually are a, a cue or a link, a link to you that they are credible sites. If you see edu as it relates to education or gov as it relates to like government, those sites or sources usually indicate a credible source or site. Okay. And then the second thing is to look for an author that is an expert or is a re well-respected publisher. So some examples of this are the, are the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. These are all very respected publishers and it's very, um, um, ex, what's considered experts in different fields of publishing or information sources. Okay, and another indication that an online source is valid, you will see citations at the very end of the page that are used to relate back to where they got some of their, where they reference some of the information that they used on their site. Okay, and then finally, there is up-to-date information for the topic. It, usually the most current information is going to be some of the most valid resources you could use because just like anything else, if something is outdated, then it's not always the most valuable resource to use. Now, obviously, there's exceptions when it comes to certain things like historical documents and things like that. Those are accurate and valid sources, but those are things that are time tested that are historically related. So in that case, that would be an exception. But when you're using different sources online to research different topics, that would be a good rule of thumb for you to use. Okay. 
Um, right now, I'm going to share with you a video that I have about being a responsible digital citizen. Um, and I hope that it gives you some insight into some of the different tips and tricks of how to engage with other people online. Come to think of it, there actually isn't a single email that I've written over the last few months without the help of Grammarly. Grammarly. The internet and social media platforms connect us with our friends, family, and peers in new ways. Sometimes people take advantage of these platforms and use them to spread negative messages about others. Cyberbullying, or bullying that takes place on the internet, can be just as bad as bullying in person. People can use the internet to send mean messages to someone, spread fake rumors, or share someone's private information without permission. When someone is cyberbullied, their feelings can be hurt and their reputation can be damaged. You cannot always prevent cyberbullying, but you can play a part in making the internet a friendlier and safer place for everyone. Here are some guidelines you can follow to promote digital civility online. Live by the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated, whether you're in person or online. Avoid sending negative messages and participating in behavior that can hurt someone else. Respect differences. We're all different in many ways. When you interact with people online, Respect their differences in opinion, experience, and culture. Even if you don't agree with something that another person shares online, you should still treat them with respect and make the internet a friendly space for communication. Pause before replying. Before you share anything online, always pause and think about the consequences. Will your message hurt someone else? Will it damage your reputation or the safety or reputation of others? Think twice before sharing online. Stand up for yourself and others. If you feel unsafe online, you should feel comfortable to remove yourself from a situation and report it to someone you trust. When you see cruel or dangerous activity online, offer support to those involved and report the incident to someone you trust. We can all play a part in making the internet a safe and friendly place for everyone. Do your part and be a responsible digital citizen online. Okay, uh, that video, even though it was brief, it had some very important and very informative facts and tips of how you best could um, treat other people when you're engaging with them online. And so finally, we'll close with some key points that are related to our discussion on digital citizenship. Follow the do's and even the don'ts, even though I didn't specifically state the don'ts, we've kind of discussed some of the don'ts of things that you should not do when you're um, online and use online etiquette, which means we know what etiquette means. It's your manners and how you behave and treat other people just like the video previously said, just follow the golden rule of treating other people the way you would like to be treated. Okay, and promote social awareness to, to better your community and engage yourself. That means be involved and um, try to do things that help improve your community and other people's situations. And also spread positivity, not negativity. So when you're engaging online, no matter how you feel about the person's the person themselves or their opinion, be positive. Don't spread negativity and say hurtful or cruel things to other people. And to me, one of the things that that um, I like to kind of link with the digital, di digital citizenship discussion is always remember the three R's. OK, so what's the three R's? Be respectful, responsible and resourceful. All of these things we've talked about, we all know what being respectful means. Be be kind, treat others the way you would want to be treated. Responsible, that means make good decisions. Be um, thoughtful of the way you treat other people when you're engaging with them and different conversations. And resourceful, that means 
the sources that you that you utilize and you and you find use them to your advantage use them to help work to the better good so i thank you for allowing you for you allow me to give you this presentation on digital citizenship also in my presentation i included some work cited some um, examples of how you would cite some of these sources that you utilize in a presentation. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and it was very informative to you. Thank you so much.